So what I'm going to focus on is the easiest, most successful, and dare I say laziest survival garden you can do. Now I say lazy with quotes because setting it up is actually a ton of work, but then once you do the work up front, it's super easy to take care of for years and years. Almost uh, no weeding and no watering, which you can't say about other styles of gardening. So let me take you through the whole process. Hi, welcome to my channel. Um, all of a sudden, <laughs> since the emergency, everybody's interested in gardening. So I've had this, uh, been doing gardening stories for over 10 years on here. Mainly just, you know, hobby gardening. But if you're like me, you're concerned about the food supply because of uh, supply chain shock. And it's like the perfect storm. The, you know, a, a lot of people don't realize the food is harvested by seasonal immigrants. And none of those people are allowed out anymore. So farmers here have decided they cannot afford to grow stuff that's just going to rot on the vine because nobody's there to pick it. So some of the farmers are not even going to grow a crop this summer. And they're closing some of the borders to shipments. So it's like the perfect storm right now of that there's probably going to be a food shortage. I can't think of anything else. Because, you know, a lot of the food here in the U.S. is shipped from other countries, but they're kind of stopping that. So, or, it's just a lot of uncertainty. So everybody's interested in growing their own. And they should. So I have talked about, you know, survival gardening in the past. And the one big thing that I will say is if you are a beginner gardener who has never gardened, you don't need to try anything um, fancy and stuff you see in the magazines. It takes time and practice to get good at this stuff. What you're going to do is you're going to go for the biggest bang for the buck that you will be successful with and produces a lot of food. The ones we're going to focus on for the biggest bang for success and easy is potatoes, beans, zucchini, and some salad greens. Those are where you're really going to um, actually grow enough that you could feed yourself some. Now understand, if you're like me, I live on maybe an eighth of an acre. This is very, very small right where I'm at right now, and I, I didn't plan on riding this out here. This was like a temporary home. So I've been gardening here for a few years, kind of building it up, but it's, it's basically a hobby garden. There's not a whole lot. Like if I swing it around and show you, um, it's just a few beds, really. So I have to expand, and what I'm going to do is put all my time and effort into a potato patch where I'm going to grow some beans on the edges. Now, this potato patch is not going to be enough to get uh, myself or, or two people through the winter. I'll probably have to double it and make it another one at least, maybe another two, depending on how heavy you guys eat. That being said, right now you can still find dried potatoes and dried uh, beans and corn and rice. Those are your big staples. You want to buy as much as you can find out there right now because their supply chain is shocks coming and nobody's really talking about it. So stock up, plan on being prepared for you and your family for a year. Uh, as far as rice goes, you can eat, I think it's something like a 20 pound bag will feed three people for a month where you could eat every day. Now it's not, you know, that's kind of still starvation living, but you can at least have a meal. So you need to really, like when I talk to people, I'm like, hey, are you prepared for this? And they're like, yeah, my freezer's full. You're like, and you have a teenager in the house? Well, yeah, it's, you know that freezer's gonna be empty in a week, right, or two weeks. It's, it, that's not enough food. You need to get dry staple food. All right, that being said, um, it's a lot easier to buy the food while it's available than to grow it. Especially if some of you guys watch are in apartments and stuff and you're like, well, I can't really grow stuff. And I'm gonna teach you um, how to grow some stuff on pots to try to get the biggest bang for the buck. Believe it or not, you can grow potatoes in, in five gallon buckets uh, you won't get a lot, but it'll be a month or two of food. And, you know, you can grow greens easy inside. Um, so there's something you could do at least to supplement so you didn't just sit there and, and don't feel like you have any uh, proactive power. One of the worst things you can do is just sit there and watch the news and freak out about this. The best thing you can do is do something proactive and empowering like growing your own food and becoming more self-sufficient. All right, now I'm going to get off my soapbox. Let's get down to this. Um, Potato garden is what we're doing. So this whole project I've documented is how to do a potato garden with the easiest. Now, remember, I've been doing this stuff on and off for 20 years. I have tried all kinds of gardens. 
there are two really successful easy gardens. Um, the Back to Eden wood chip is what I use because I have access to wood chips. And the roost out method, which is using hay. Well, actually straw, hay. No, I think they use hay. They use hay. Um, if you have access to lots of hay, you might want to go that route. Either work just as good. I'm going to go with wood chips because I, I, uh, I like to grow other stuff. And I I'm just use wood chips. I'm more comfortable with it. And I, I think they work better. What this allows you to do is you can grow a garden if you don't really know what you're doing without having to worry too much about weeding. Weeding's almost non-existent. It's like, I do an hour of weeding a year. Um, and you don't really have to water. Even in the south. I grew these type of gardens in Savannah, Georgia, where it was brutally hot, and they still worked. I was growing broccoli in the middle of the summer in these gardens, and people were like, how the heck are you doing that? The wood chips absorb water and release it slowly like a sponge. So it can rain, and that stuff will be good for like months. It's ridiculous how long it holds on the water. If you dig two or three inches in into it, it's still damp. It's crazy. So we're going to focus on wood chip gardening for your potatoes so you're easy and successful. Now, if you're starting a brand new patch where it is literally going to follow what I'm doing, usually your first year garden is not going to be that great. You're probably going to get maybe a three to four to one return on your potatoes. So you put in 10 pounds, you might grow 40. Um, but after about a year or two, or I'd say about year two or three, that will turn from uh, one to three to about one to ten. You'll get about ten times full of what you uh, plant once the soil starts to break down. So what happens is the, you can throw wood chips on any crappy soil, and in about a year, that soil underneath starts to become wonderful soil. After five years, it's incredible soil. So what happens is these wood chips break down and become amazing topsoil, but it takes time. The first year you're kind of waiting for that process to go, but right now you're like, hey, I didn't really garden for this. I'm not ready for this. What can I do right now? Well, potato garden will get you through and if for the best bang of the buck. I'm going to show you some other stuff that you can grow really quick. Uh, again, and stuff you pick and it keeps producing. So, you know, things like zucchini. Uh, even though I didn't mention earlier peppers, the more you pick, the more you get. And beans, the more you harvest, if people, you know, you're worried about people like stealing your stuff, if they pick your beans, they're actually helping you because they come back even more. So um, you will be sick of green beans probably <laughs> when you finish this. But I'm going to show you this layout. So let me get started and I'll talk you through um, the, the breakdown. Depending on your resources, this cost me about $300 to do to get enough dirt and enough wood chips and potatoes uh, again that seems like a lot but not really considering that thing will grow massive amounts of potatoes for 20 years so let's get started and uh, again if you're like in an apartment and you can't do this stuff just stick with me I'm gonna teach you how to use some buckets you can use the same techniques and uh, have pretty success uh, for growing as long as you can get light in your house one thing I will mention you need to have enough light to do this you got to go out to your yard and usually in, in the north here it's the southern facing light. You want to find which way south and put your patch there. You're going to need about six to six to ten hours of light. Six will give you kind of crappy potatoes but you'll get them. Ten will give you awesome potatoes. So make sure you have enough light where you put this. Here we go. So to prepare for the spring garden, adding a new section here. This is all cardboard that you can get. Uh, I got these from the liquor store. They have really good boxes that are nice and thick. So you just break them down, spread them out, and still got a little winter snow. So I'm using that to keep it flat and wet until it rains. And tomorrow, hopefully, I will have some loam to put over it. Now I couldn't necessarily get topsoil because nobody seems to be delivering topsoil for an outrageous... Uh, I think the big box stores are like Lowe's and stuff but they're just outrageously expensive so I'm getting loam and then I'm gonna put a bunch of wood chips over it and that should work out good because as the wood chips break down the season the loam will become excellent topsoil so there we go that's how we're starting
spreading for us. That was nice. So real quick, here's my garden I'm starting right now. Uh, I just put this dirt down today. It just came. So there we go. And uh, this is going to be basically an emergency potato patch. So I'm spreading this loam right now, and this is really exhausting. But you can still get stuff delivered even in this crisis right now. So start getting a garden going. So it's important that you uh, rake and loosen the soil. As soon as you compact it, you'll notice how it becomes clay-like, and it won't let water in. It just sits on top. But the stuff around it is getting there. And I, I haven't quite raked it yet, so it still looks like it should look sort of like this not this so it's important that you rake your soil and then only walk on your walkways um, you can compact those but everything else otherwise the water just sits there and rots your roots so after many days of sifting and raking and moving this soil i'd say 95 percent of the rocks and grass lumps are out and it's all aerated and ready to go when the truck comes, it'll compress it, and I'll have to get back in there and rake those areas where the tires were. Uh, other than that, it's ready. Oh, and this, if you can get screened loam, do it. This is all I could get right now. Once you have about three to four inches of dirt, it's time to put the wood chips on top. Here's the pile. You get an idea of how tall that is with the rake. Um, I will have to loosen all this where he drove. And I'm going to make two keyholes probably, or maybe even tees, to maximize the growing space. I mean, it's kind of pointless to uh, have half your garden be walkways. So it should only be about 20% if I do it right. Anyway, that's a big pile. Here we go. So I'm going to upcycle these dehydration trays. They're in bad shape. They're busted and pretty rotten. They're, you know when the plastic gets old and they crack a lot? But the ring's strong. So I'm going to repurpose these into screens, and you'll see how this works. Um, if you don't have anything like this, let me show you something else you can use. A lot of times you can use a milk jug tray. Um, try to find one either with really big holes or cut some big holes and then you'll put screen in that. That's pretty easy to find. Let me go look at my pollinator beds that aren't doing anything yet. Uh, oh, here's what I'm looking for. So we're going to use this screen. Now they call this ground cloth. It doesn't look like cloth. I have no idea why they call it that. And even though these little squares are like quarter of an inch sometimes they call this half inch it doesn't look like a half inch but this is the size I'm rolling with so I'm gonna cut this and then I'm just gonna duct tape it in because this stuff is sharp you'll use a wire cutter to do it that's it and these are my Nankin cherries and they are getting ready even though we are way early but the weather's been nice I'm starting to get buds on these guys so uh, I might crop a few of these off and clone them. I might have missed it because they're starting to open a little. But you got to catch those before winter, uh, before the spring. And you can make a lot more cherry bushes. So it's finished. It took a lot longer than I expected. Um, not sure it's worth the work, but I bet it's going to save me a massive amount of time with screening on buckets. Now again, check it out. So that's what it does. It'll fit on top. It's got a little, and you can even flip it over if you want to catch some of the screen junk in there. And then you flip it off. You'll see me do that later. Uh, honestly, it's going to take a year to do with buckets like this to screen. I'm probably going to upcycle these things. 
and use this large one. And again, I'm doing this all by hand because I know some of you guys watching this have access to front loaders and you know you have access to maybe even a garden tractor to push all this stuff around. I don't and probably 95% of people watching this don't. So yeah, you're not going to pay much. It's going to be practically free to do this, but the flip side is you're going to have to muscle it out and hopefully uh, you know this is what children are for. <laughs> you know back in the day people had seven eight kids that's why you're gonna you're gonna use them uh, that being said though seriously it, you know it's one bucket at a time but it will be screened thoroughly and it'll work and you could do this at home on the cheap so here we're using the screen we made and it's a lot like gold pan and you'll you'll just shuffle it around and then when you get the big pieces in you're done use that stuff and just throw it on your path that's it so here's what the screen looks like, and here's what it looks like without screen. You see how much smaller these. This stuff will break down into topsoil within a year or two. This stuff will take four or five years, maybe even more. So that's why you're screening. Now, with potatoes, it doesn't really matter. You could just save a, a ton of time and not screen and dump it. But if you ever want to use this garden for anything besides potatoes in the next few years, you're going to want to screen. Or if you plan on, like I do, where I'm going to put beans in certain areas, uh, where the beans go need to be screened, and where you put zucchini or other plants, you get patches of screened uh, chips. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just basically going to make a few patches. So here's how I'm setting this garden up. I'm going to put dirt down uh, about as far as I can reach. So I can reach from about two to three feet in this way and two to three feet in this way to maximize the growing space. So I actually dug a trench and filled it with wood chips. That's going to be my walkway. And these, this area that is all dirt will be mounded. And then right up against the road, you can see I just put cardboard and wood chips and that'll get much deeper. And the idea is here's the road. During the winter, the, the plow trucks push all the salt and junk in and I don't want it in my garden. So I'm using all this debris that's left over to build a little wall. So it'll absorb the salt and not my garden. Okay, so I've laid out potatoes about a foot apart. And you'll see, you want to put the little chets out, the eyes. These are my stunt potatoes. These are potatoes that I am not real sure that are even going to live. But I'm putting my garden in really early in this demonstration, about a month earlier than I should, just so I can show you guys what to do. So I'm just going to make a little test area so you guys can get started in the south and all that. Look at there. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bury these. And you want to put them so the eyes are up. Okay. And just put them in loose soil. You can bury them a little if you want. But it's fine to just lay them right on top. And what I'm going to do is put um, some of the screen stuff around it. About two or three inches so the, the um, you know, little baby potatoes growing have room to go it out. And then I'm going to put about six inches of material up on this. And you'll see, I'll mound them up. It needs to be about six to eight inches. And the potatoes are strong enough to push through those potatoes. The, uh, the wood chips, when they start shooting their greens up, uh, their slips, you will have enough room where it'll just push right through the wood chips and come on up. Now, it will take a while if you're going to mulch deep. You know, you'll we'll put them in and you won't even see the greens for a month or two. So don't freak out. They're, they're growing. All right, so let me do the next stage and I'll, we'll be done. So the potatoes were right here, the stunt potatoes. And what I'm doing is there's a pathway here. So let me show you. And I'm going to need more chips. I didn't have enough to go all the way. So this section's not done. I'm going to have to get another truckload. Um, but if you can tell, there's about a little pathway where I'm walking. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I made a keyhole. So it goes around the edge. And this will be to maximize, so I'll only have to put one or two. Now, probably about probably about three of these little pathways in. And if I really, really got desperate, I could plant stuff in the pathways and just stay out of it until it's harvest time. So, uh, there you go. It's finished. So, you're looking at the way I did it, about 300 bucks all in. If you have absolutely nothing, you can use your own soil if you want to cut it and flip it. And... And then put uh, wood chips over it. 
but it's not going to do as well. It'll take a year or two to break down. After two years or so, it'll be great. But the first year, it takes a while for all this to break down. Remember, you do not want to mulch the chips into the soil. Never do that. You want to put the chips on top of the soil. Don't put them in or they rob the nitrogen out. So you'll see what I'm saying on the edge here. I'm just spreading them over the soil. I am not digging them in and mulching them in. Don't do that. One last thing I forgot to mention is, you know, this is probably a tw maybe 20 by 25 feet patch, maybe maybe 20 by 30. I haven't measured it, but it's it's about that. Um, that is only going to produce about half the potatoes I need. I should be around maybe 60 by 60. I'm going to compact them and try to get as much in as I can. But if you're trying to love solely off, like there's no food at all, you need a lot more room, and that's for two people, probably. Um, and that's considering you eat a lot of potatoes. Like if you're actually using them to as the staple of your diet, you would need a much bigger patch than this. Now, if you have a family of four, that means you're going to have to double it to probably do a, you know, 100 to 100. But even just this size, like we just used a parking space that I wasn't using and cannibalized it. And that should be enough to at least, I mean, if, if we got really serious and we had to ration or something, we'd probably survive on this garden. Uh, but at least I feel like at least we have something in some sort of control over their food situation. But I'm probably going to try to find another way to grow another garden this size somewhere in the yard. So here's a cross <clears throat> cut of what you're looking at. We got the cardboard on the ground. And then you'll see kind of the layers. I'll put it down here. You got about four to six inches of soil. And then I've got six to eight inches of chips. So that's the breakdown of the mound. And remember, never mix your chips in with your soil. Just lay them on top. And that's, you can get a better idea. And ladies and gentlemen, for no reason, the super moon. It's super than other moons. Jeez, I can't hold that focus that long. Let me zoom out. There you go. Because a lot of you guys are beginner gardeners who have never grown potatoes before and you know, you're know you concerned so you all of a sudden you're real interested, I am putting this together. <laughs> this is my high-tech drawing on how this works because potatoes, um, if you've never grown them, they grow kind of weird. So what we've done in the garden is we put down three or four inches of soil first. That's the loam I used. And then I put the seed potato right on top. And what will happen, remember I pointed the little eyes up. And those eyes are called uh, chits. you got to be careful how you say that. Uh, you know what's weird in the south? I heard some people call them chets. Like, like the brother from uh, Weird Science, the old brother, played by Bill Paxton. Not Bill Pullman, what everybody always makes. Anyway, enough about 80s movies. Um, these are chits. And what will happen is they will start to grow into a main stem. The actual seed potato is going to sit right on the soil. And then this is 6 to 8 inches of wood chips. And as this thing grows, it will actually start producing little roots called stolons. And if you're from Russia, you can say Stalins. Because, you see, that's, that's a word on jokes there. Okay. Anyway, so these little roots, these Stalins, will actually start growing the new potatoes in time. So the potatoes, you would think, like, if you'd never grown them before, you'd be like, oh, they go into the soil and grow down. No, they actually grow up. And this is why some people will mound potatoes as they go with dirt. But we're doing it the easy, lazy way. We're going to put six to eight inches of wood chips and what this allows is the wood chips are so light and uh, easy to push out of the way that this potatoes will just grow up and spread out into the wood chips instead of having to push through really tough soil and then having to mound again and mound again. And uh, that's, that's a tough way to do it. Now here's a little thing you need to know about potatoes. Usually, the first buds that come up, um, every, all the development is underneath it. Some people will cheat and try to cover the buds and try to force more potato production. But I find out it doesn't really, 
I don't think it works that well because it slows the time down of you know, potatoes are really long. If I forgot to tell you, it takes about five months. You're looking at 20 weeks. These things have to be in the ground to grow well. Um, what will happen is you will get this bud. And pretty much after the first leaf, everything below it is where the actual potatoes are growing is. So you'll see the plant go and it'll grow and it'll sprout more and more leaves and it'll flower. After it flowers, you know that these potatoes are starting to grow well. And um, depending on who you listen to, some people harvest them pretty much right as they flower. I let this thing go completely dead. I pretty much wait until as far as I can push it into the cold weather, this plant will look completely dead on top. It'll have long flowered, usually three to four weeks after it flowers, it'll, it'll just kind of self-destruct. And, uh, and that's when you'll pull the plant up. And with wood chips, it's so easy. You just move the chips out of the way and you don't have to dig. I, I don't understand the people that make it so hard putting them in mounds and digging them in and digging them out uh, and fertilizing them and all that junk. This, the wood chips are like magical, man. They just do, they fertilize, they keep it at the perfect moisture, they keep it at a really good temperature. You can get your uh, seed potatoes in early. So this is the way you want to go. So hopefully that'll help you understand that this is a long game. This is, a, like I said, 20 weeks of development and the plant will look dead. On a side note, there's a couple, there's two things that really happen a lot with potatoes. That is scabbing, which is a bacteria that gets into the soil. It's not a big deal. You can just cut the scab off and eat it. Uh, most likely every potato chip you've ever eaten is made out of funky potatoes that didn't make the cut to sell. So you've probably been eating these all the time and you don't even know it. Uh, but it makes it really hard to use as a seed potato again because they're real susceptible to disease. Once the bacteria is in the soil, it's really hard to get it out. Scabbing is a pain, and I'll show you an example of that. And then uh, you can treat it with like some sort of sulfur stuff, and I don't think it's worth it. What I would tell you to focus on are go with the varieties that resist scab. So we're going to try to buy things like russets and things with thicker skins that don't seem to have as much problem with it. it they're, they're more resistant. I mean, they'll still get them, but they're more resistant. The other thing is called potato blight, and what will happen is the leaves will start having these like brown dots and the leaves will start dying. If you get blight, you pretty much have to go to ground zero and cut the entire plant off. You just cut the whole thing off and burn it. Don't put it near any of your other compost or any of that, burn it. And what'll happen though is the potatoes will still be okay under the ground and they'll still even develop some um, and they'll start to harden. They just won't really grow a whole lot more once you cut the plant off but you can save your crop by if you get blight you just cut the whole plant off um because what happens is blight gets in the leaves goes down the stems then it goes all the way in and kills everything so you try to catch it at the leaves and cut it off it's like a civil war amputation all right something i forgot to mention in this drawing is you know when you put your seed potato down it will root but it doesn't have to go that far just three or four inches in soil should be enough to hold it uh, remember all the developments going up and the amount of chips you make that's why I try to go all the way up to eight ch inches of chips some people have even heard of taking a foot up because that is where all the potatoes will develop right in the chips now you have to watch most of the time this is a super easy lazy garden where the potato will develop underneath the chips and the chips will just rise up you never ever want the potatoes to see sunlight if they touch sunlight, they will go green and they become like toxic t potatoes. You don't want to eat those. So that's why you'll see people constantly mounding. And we're not screwing with any of that. That's like the hard way to do it. Um, messing with soil is a pain. Wood chips will do everything for you super easy. So what we're going to do is uh, you can also, I meant to mention, you can copy this recipe in a big container. So some of you guys watching the apartment people, like, I can't do this. You could put it out on your balcony, assuming you get enough light, um, or get a grow light, and you could grow a couple containers, and you just do it the same way. You put three or four inches of soil, wood chips all the way pretty much to the top of the uh, bucket, uh, you know, six to eight inches, maybe a little room, and that's about it. And once you hard water it in, you don't have to water it too much. The wood chips hold the water and release it as it's needed 
indoors in a container you're gonna have to water some outdoors you won't have to unless you're in a massive drought I never water once these are in place you're done all you have to do is keep watching for the blight uh, that's about it um, those are the big ones and the original seed potato like I said will go into the soil and even you'll see roots the stalins here look like roots too um, but it, the seed potato too when you're finished a lot of people won't eat the seed potato uh, because it's just kind of spent I have found if you're really in a desperate situation you can reuse a seed potato sometimes sometimes they will go two to three seasons <laughs> I mean I've had a sweet potato in my ground for like four years that just keeps putting out I don't know it's a massive sweet potato or something because uh, usually after a seed potato spent it's done but if you're in a desperate time I would just throw the seed potatoes back in over the winter uh, put them under the chips and let them winter and see what happens I mean, the worst that happens is nothing it breaks down and becomes soil but you'd be surprised so you pretty much don't want to eat seed potato you'll harvest all the rest as far as when you're ready to put in seed potatoes really it's going to depend on your temperature outside um, for sweet potatoes you got to wait for the soil to at least be 50 degrees uh, regular potatoes you can get in probably right above freezing and you'll be alright as long as you cover them deep with with uh, wood chips like a lot but sweet potatoes really won't do anything until they're after 50 so take a look at these chits here these are just starting sometimes if you let your root go to three to four inches it's too big even though you get a big head start you'll break them when you put them in the soil so you're looking at maybe just like a fingers length or below so I'll actually put this in it'll just take longer to develop but this way they don't break them off let's talk about our seed potatoes so these are some potatoes I got from a, a local farmer who bartered some stuff out a while back now these were planned on for eating so some um, are not the best quality but this kind of situation hey at least I got seed potatoes so what I'm doing is I'm taking them out and encouraging them to come out of dormancy and washing them but you see stuff like this this is a scabby potato normally you know on better days you would probably just throw this into the compost and that'd be it because it's kind of a diseased potato but for years and years I've always just cut that piece out and harvested the insides and the rest and they've never gotten sick from eating them so you can do this but this is not one you want to plant unless you have absolutely nothing else I mean it will grow but you'll get a bunch of more diseased potatoes um, you do not want to put this in usually as a seed potato unless you're just you know like I said absolutely desperate unfortunately um, because of the way these were stored when they were given to me there is a little mold on some of these because there was not good airflow so if it's just a little like this you can clean it off and wash it normally you never want to wash your potatoes um, unless you're ready to plant them and even then you want to give them a few days to heal you want to let them scab over but what I use is something called a mush brush so this is to clean mushrooms when they're dry so like if you're into eating mushrooms technically you're not supposed to wash mushrooms because it somehow messes up the taste you just scrape it dry with these things but it's so soft that it doesn't damage the skin so I use this to wash the mold off in water and uh, and I'll reclaim these I'll probably just set them out and let them dry and they'll be good to go ideally you know in a perfect world I wouldn't mess with any of this if you buy seed potatoes that are ready to go you're good but uh, with the uncertainty coming up I'm not going to throw out of something that could be used as a good potato if I can clean it up so there we go um, let me show you how not to store it so this was just in a like a pickle bucket and unfortunately it was not opened enough that enough air got in like if you look at this one perfectly fine they're ready to go but this one too tight and what happened is it sealed down and got moist in here you can see all the water so now I got mold problems I'm gonna salvage what I can and uh, we'll cut up and store the rest or pitch some I hate to throw them out but if they're unsalvageable anyway hopefully you won't have the same problem if you can find seed potatoes you know they're already disease free and ready to go but um, if you're like me who stores your potatoes then sometimes this stuff happens or if you get them from a stored person like I did on this bucket um, these were just sealed too tight 
Ideally, you want to store them in a burlap sack or lay them out individually on a rack, or you can put them in uh, wet sand. Some people do that over the winter. But I used, um, I couldn't really get burlap right now, but I did find cotton bags. And these bags are actually at the Dollar Tree for a buck. So they are now potato storage bags, and we shouldn't have any mold problems if you store them in something like this. So let's talk a little more about scab. Um, this is actually caused by a bacteria, and depending on your soil conditions, you know, the bacteria gets in this. Now, I had gotten these from another farmer. I'm not exactly sure how they grow these. Hopefully, in the wood chip garden, there'll be a lot less scab, but notice it's very dependent on variety, too. These potatoes, no scab at all. All these are the same species. So I'm going to go through a list of more scab resistant potatoes. So if you can still get seed potatoes out there, you can buy those if you're worried about uh, regrowing and, you know, having a lot more resistant to scab. Many times you watch videos about potatoes and it's all about how to store them. But this one's opposite. It's actually about how to get them ready to put in the ground. So we're going to want to wake them from dormancy. So the advice will be opposite of what you normally hear. When you store them you want to keep them in a cool dark place and uh, keep a little humidity. I think it's like 30 percent usually. You want to keep them somewhat humid. A lot of people pack them in wet sand just to keep them humid. This is opposite. I want these things to start growing. So we're going to take them out of a dark place. We're going to warm them up and I'm even going to give them, I give them a bath to get them started um, and then I let them dry back out so they don't get moldy. But basically by giving them a bath, it wakes them up. It's kind of like a spring shower. It'll be like, oh, okay, I guess growing season's here. So that's the deal with that. I'm going to salvage uh, what I can out of these. These were kind of a bad batch from, uh, uh, you know, there's some are pretty scabby and stuff. But whatever, we'll eat those and then uh, we'll, we'll use the rest for seed potatoes. So after getting my potato bed in, my neighbors have also decided to put one in. Check it out. Good things ripple out. One good thing in an uh, emergency situation is to help your neighbors. It's good karma just to be a good neighbor and show them how to do this, but also it's a little bit selfish because if they're worried about their garden, they're not worried about what you're growing in your garden. They're worried about their own food. And just to make everyone more self-sufficient. So I've talked to a few of my neighbors. I went around and talked to them about the situation, offered to help them. And I think I have four different people uh, that want potato patches. So this is the first one going in. And it's just a real smart thing to help your community become sufficient. All right, well, good luck with your garden. I will give you updates as this thing grows and you'll see how much it does in September but this is enough information for you to get started and feel free to leave in the comments any questions you have or comments um, or suggestions I've been doing this for years but I'm always open to learning more so uh, one last thing I forgot to mention is that uh, you won't have to water a wood chip garden but you might have to the first time if the wood chips are kind of dry You'll have to water them until the first big rain. Then after that, they're set. You don't have to do much anymore. You should not have to weed. Um, once a year, some weeds will just kind of blow in. And because of the way wood chips are, they're super easy to pull out. They can't take root deep. Um, so the weeding is going to be incredibly minimal. Anyway, good luck with your garden. Look out for each other. Get your neighbors to grow too. I've already talked to a couple of my neighbors are going to copy this idea. So we're not fighting over food in a few months. We're going to all have our own gardens. So... Get out there and talk to your uh, next door neighbors and you help them, they help you, and everything goes a lot easier. Stick together. I'll keep giving you updates. Oh, and um, if you want, you know, uh, YouTube censored my channel, so uh, most likely you're not going to see, you know, I have almost 100,000 subscribers and I might get two, 300 views sometimes. Um, you have to hit that little bell. It'll notify you if you want to keep up with my gardening stuff. Uh, other than that, so all I can tell you, you can kind of email me if you have questions. Or just put them in the comments is the fastest way. Anyway, I love you guys. Hang in there. Bye.